cutting off backboards of Marcinkwitz, of Schilke's, of Box, and of Jet Tones. And when I got to the Jet Tones, there was something special about that for me. Started cutting off just any Jet Tone that I found that I didn't like the mouthpiece itself. I found a, a few that really, really worked for me. That is what I play on, and that is what the mouthpiece line, the Patrick mouthpiece, uh, where that design came from was from those particular ones that were probably made in the 60s, maybe the 70s. Not really sure, actually, but it was early on. It was fairly early on. Um, I played with that for years, and I had different tops that I made, you know, with uh, Scott Lasky and Schilke and Terry Warburton and uh, several other makers. And I would be really specific, this is what I want. And they almost always argued with me and said, well, that won't work or this. And I just said, look, just humor me. Just let me try this. So a lot of trial and error, a lot of money spent, uh, a lot of paperweights. But what I came up with is what I play on still. And, and I've, that's where the entire line is born out of for the commercial side. Uh, what I realized is that my top had a 28 drill. My backboard had a 27 drill. And I thought that was unusual. And I talked to several mouthpiece makers. And what I found out was that's something that a lot of players have done over the years. A lot of really well-known, well-respected, you know, you'd know their names if I mentioned them, players that had that setup. And I thought that was interesting. So I tried, I, at that point I was making, having my own uh, model made in a one piece. And I was like, okay, I should be able to play in this. So I made it in a 28 drill. And then I, I back and forth with the 28 drill versus my two piece setup that was a 28 in the top, 27 in the back. And lo and behold, it was not the same. It didn't even feel the same on my chops, even though when you started playing, even though when you would put it up to your chops, it felt the exact same. But when you started playing, because of that resistance difference, it now felt different on my chops. I was like, well, I just need to open this up. So I opened it up to a 27, thinking, okay, now it's more open to match the backboard on my two piece. It's a 27. Now, even though the 28 was what my top was, I had the 27 backboard. So I'm like, okay, I'll make the one piece in a 27. So I played that, not the same. It still, it felt more open in general, but when I started playing up higher and higher, it kind of, it wanted to back up. It didn't take the air the same. So I'm like, well, I'll open it up even more. I went to a 26. I tried half sizes as well. I went to a 26, same thing. Now it started feeling like it might be too open, but it still had a great sound. But again, when I went up top, it would start shutting down on me. I, I struggled with endurance. I struggle with the resonance and the notes really opening up on top and really being huge sounding. So what I finally came to realize is there's something to that stair step bore. I'm not sure if it's something because of that throat area, if it's something about having a shorter throat area of the smaller drill and then opening it up to a larger throat area of the 27 drill. I'm not positive what it is. now. Some engineers might speculate, but again, remember, we're squishing our lips in there. We're using pressure. We're pushing on it. Depending on how shallow the cup is, is makes the difference in how long that throat section is. So this is a very unscientific way of trying to explain this. This is a personal journey or my own personal story with how this works for me. Fast forward to my own mouthpiece line and me making the mouthpieces that way and having, and having people over to the house and, and trying them and, and people that are, are trying both the one and the two piece, I would say about 95% of the people pick the two piece in the commercial, brand, the commercial cups, except for the 5Z. Why would that be different for the 5Z? The 5Z is a bowl cup. It's a little bit shallower than a standard classical bowl cup but that Doc Severinsen model that I have, it's a slightly smaller bowl cup, okay? It's not a V-shape. So that one plays better as a one piece. So uh, I hope this helps. It's, it'll probably spawn a lot of speculation and a, a lot of people that, they think, that might think they have it figured out, and, and you might. Uh, 
but I don't. I could admit that. But I can also say that almost everybody that tries my mouthpieces, the commercial ones, gravitates towards the two-piece models, and they like it in that. One more thing about that. A lot of people will say, well, I want it to be really open. I want a bigger sound. And so I want the classical backboard because it's the same shape as your commercial backboard, but just bigger. And I want to put more air through because yours feels tight. I want to caution you about that because as soon as you have a more open backboard on that shape cup, it's not really balanced. Uh, what happens is that because it's so open in the backboard, for about 15 minutes, your range is fantastic. Your, your sound is enormous. Um, your projection is great. All of those things, it's like the best of. But what happens after a little bit of time is that you don't have that resistance pushing back on you. And now you start to have to do all the work right here in your chops, right? Well, what happens is after a little bit of time, you're going to fall in because you don't have that resistance to lean against. When you don't have that resistance, you've got to make all of that resistance happen with your chops. Now your chops are overworking on a shallow mouthpiece. One of the big things about my commercial mouthpieces is that so many people have said, I've never been able to play on a shallow mouthpiece until I played your commercial mouthpieces. That is why, because there's built-in resistance to lean up against so that if you relax with your chops and support with your air and don't try to overplay, if you just relax and let the sound be your guide. So whatever's coming out of the bell, if it sounds good, you might be playing 20, 30, 35% less. You might be working less. So if you're working less, don't work more. That's the whole point of an easier mouthpiece is to, to make it easier. So relax, lean against that resistance, and don't try to play it more aggressively than you have to. The support should still be there. Your air support should still be there, but you're buying a mouthpiece to help you with your range and endurance and projection, those kind of things. If it's doing it, you don't have to overplay. You know, I hope that all makes sense and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.